Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Pigments. This is video nine, and today we're talking about the sample engine. So go ahead and load up a new preset here, and let's go over to the sample engine. So in here, what we see is the default grand piano C3. So if we hit a note, we see the sample being played, and we hear it most importantly. Now it might be a little bit difficult to see on your screen, but as soon as we hit a note and hold it, we can see a slight little white line that's kind of just scrolling through. This is going to be kind of like the timeline of this, of this sample as it goes through here and we let go and it goes away. Now, if we want to browse through the different samples that come stock with pigments, we can click this button up here where it says A Grand Piano C3. And this is kind of similar to the wavetable menu that we saw before, but this is going to be for samples. So here in the categories, we can see bells and mallets. We have the bellophone and we can just, we can just click these to listen to them. And up here is a very convenient slider because that was a little bit too loud. So we can just reach for this knob here and then turn up and down the volume for this preview window or the headphones to turn it on and off if you don't want to preview it. And we see a nice little drawing here of the waveform. We have some chimes, some magic ball, interesting name, some marimbas, C1, C2, C3, so on and so forth. We have some drones and ambience. We have some drums and percussion stuff down here. We have some field recordings of some different types of sounds, crowds, city. So interesting kind of stuff. Some drum loops, electric drum group, uh, drum groove, I mean, drum loop groove here. Straight, some kick, roomy kick, a tight kick, tighter. So there's a lot of cool samples that comes with pigments. We have some Foley here, so there's a lot of different kind of Foley sounds we have. Bike gears, crisp contracts, crumble textures. Ice cubes, so on and so forth. There's a lot of cool stuff here. We have granular friendly, which we're going to talk later about the granular engine, which is a very cool concept. Guitar and bass, so different types of guitar bass sounds, different samples. Impacts, which are nice. We have some noise here. Different from the noise oscillator in the sense we have bubbling, some vinyl sounds. What's kind of cool is you can kind of mix this into a patch that maybe you want to sound a little bit old, kind of vinyl sounding to it. Maybe you can reach for a noise, noise like that. And then you have other, so just a whole different category here. You can import your own folder. If you click this little plus right here on the bottom left, we always have this tool tip here that kind of tells us what we're doing. And then on the right, we have an import file. If you just want to bring in a certain sample that you have and bring it into pigments. So that's kind of this this sample browser in a nutshell. And we can close this by pressing X. And the same with the wavetable cycle, we can hit these forward arrow buttons and just kind of sample th or sample, scroll through the samples. Now this sample engine has a lot of the similar stuff that the un other engines have as far as tune, which we've covered, the unison, which we've covered, output, sample grain is going to be specific for this engine, and then the modulator, which is basically what we talked about before in the last few videos. So really the meat and potatoes of the sample engine are going to be in your main, your edit, and your map. So here in your main, you're kind of seeing an overview. And this sample grain menu here is going to be these two buttons here, or these two knobs here where we have start, where we can choose within the sample where we want to have the sample start playing at. So maybe we like just this section down here and we want to start it from right around here. We can do that as well. Then you have the volume here for the sample slash grain engine, which is over, which is different from the output of the engine. So this volume is going to be for the engine, and this one down here is going to be for the sampler. They're a little bit different. So moving on, what we have here is the edit menu here. So here's where you can more so define where you want your sample to start, if you want them to play forwards and backwards and tune them and so on and so forth. So over here on the tune A, we can transpose. Let's bring this. Let's actually bring a more easier tone. Let's bring in a, a marimba C1. Let's, let's try that for, for, for a change here. So we bring the start all the way to the beginning, and we hear this note. So if we want to transpose this, we can, we can do that right here. And we double click it to go back to zero, and then we have our fine tuning right here as well. Hopefully you know what that is at this point. And then C3 is going to be the root note for this sample. The next menu is going to be playback A. So right now it's in play mode normal. So it's functioning as we normally would expect it to. However, if we click this, we can go to reverse. 
and it's going to reverse as you see this line going here all the way here but if we want to if we want, don't want to wait all this way here, we can grab this little flag here and we can move this all the way over here. And now it's going to start from here. So now this is going to be the focusing spot of the sample that we have. Now we have a loop here. And it's just going to keep looping it. So let's go back to normal here and kind of listen to the loop. So it's looping as we would expect. Now something to keep in mind that if you didn't see it, we have the top flags here, but we also have the bottom flags. So if we drag this bottom flag over here to the right and let's see what happens now. So if you didn't notice, once we start the loop, it's gonna play all the way through the loop and based upon where this, this bottom flag is, that's gonna be the loop point where it keeps going. And now we have this little release button here. So this is going to work with the envelope release. So let's give a nice healthy release here. Now, if you notice here, once we once this release is still going, this is still looping. So we, we hold a note, it's, we're still holding it down. We haven't hit the release phase. So once we let go, no more keys pressed, it's still looping here. If we don't want that feature, we can just turn off release here. And then we hold a note. It's gonna keep looping and looping as soon as we let go. It's going to stop looping and then the release phase is going to continue. And then we let it go and it stops. Let's put that back on again. We're still holding sustain and as we let go. And then we have the loop fade. So this is going to be interesting here. Once we turn this knob, we can kind of see the visually what's happening here because sometimes it can't sound very clicky. If we have this off, we get those clicks. So that's what that loop fade is kind of very useful for. And we can see the little triangle shapes of the fade ins and fade outs right there. Next up, we have the loop mode forward or back and forth. So if we turn this on here, it's going to sound like this. So it starts, it goes all the way through the sample that we have selected, and then it starts looping, and then it goes back and forth, kind of, kind of like a ping pong type of effect there. So very interesting. So moving on from there, we have the mix A, the gain, and the pan. So let's put some of these back to normal. Let's take off the loop, and we just have our sample here. Let's bring our release back to normal. So mix A is going to be the gain for this sample. We can bring it up, can bring it down. And this is useful because once you start filling these different slots with maybe your own type of samples, some are lower, some are quieter. So it's nice to have a gain knob here so you can kind of even them out if you, if you intend to do so, or you can pan them. And this is going to be for sample specific stuff. So if you hopped into B, it's going to have different, the whole same menus here, but just a little bit different. Now for slot A, you have three different icons here. And at any time, if you're kind of confused or you're wondering what these things do, there's always a tool tip in the bottom left that gives you so much information, which you don't really have to read, reach for the manual as much. So if we hover our mouse over this, it says copies the selected sample to a different slot. So if you have this sample and you don't want to like drag the whole thing and find the other one, you can just copy that to sample B and it brings it right into here, which is super convenient. So next up here, this is going to be a slot A reset, so it restores to the default state of the sample. So let's click this, and then we have the length again that we changed, the tuning, and so on and so forth. It resets what we have here. Next, we have the trash can, which says removes the sample from the slot. So let's throw this one away. And it says, are you sure you want to remove this sample, select a sample from the slot? Okay, boom, it's gone. Now we're just left with B, what we had originally as we copied it. So that is the edit in a nutshell. Moving over to map, so this is going to be kind of interesting. So for this demonstration to kind of make sense, what we need to do is go to A and let's add some different type of sounds. So go to bells and mallets, let's add a vibraphone. And this first one, C, let's add maybe one of these here, D. Let's go and add a classical guitar, E. Let's add, let's see, what do we have here? Let me make another bells and mallets, music box, sure. And then one of these ones here. So now we have all our samples full, A through F are all full of samples. So now this mapping is going to come into play. So if we look at single, this is going to be what it says down here. Only the current selected sample is played across the whole keyboard and velocity spectrum. So no matter what key we play, it's going to play this selected sample. So if we go over to A, every note's going to be that sample. If we hit B, every note's going to be that sample and so on for the rest of them. 
However, if you want to do key map, we have this here. So C0 through C5, those octave ranges are going to play that specific sample. So if we have our keyboard here, you can see my notes here. As I go up an octave, it's going to play different samples. And we can see right here is playing the C. And if I went higher, it's going to play the D. So that's how you can kind of see in what octave range your keyboard is in which sample is going to be going to be triggered so you can set it up where you, you have different octaves playing different samples of your choosing in this key map section so then key velocity is kind of the same but it's also with velocity as well so we can have a range so if we see a and d are going to be on c2 so that octave section and then we see the 64 that's going to be the velocity number of where it's going to change to the sample so if i'm hitting something for example right here on f or c or what it doesn't really matter if i hit the c at an octave or at a velocity level lower than 64 it's going to play this c right here if it's going to be higher if i hit it harder on the same on the same octave that's past 64 it's going to hit the f so it's also keyboard mapped but also velocity mapped so you can have one section of your keyboard that has two different samples on it but depending on how soft or hard you play the key, it's going to trigger whichever sound is above or below 64 velocity. So that's how that works. Hopefully that makes sense. Next, we have sample pick. So here we have this knob here. And as we move it, it's going to trigger different samples. Now, this one's interesting because this is also automatable because we have a little plus here. So we hit this plus and let's go influence full LFO. And let's have this not re-trigger every single time. So let's have this free running. So wherever we hit a note and wherever this value is at that certain spot, it's going to trigger that exact sample that is whatever value it hits. So moving on from there, we have round robin. And this is basically going to, as we see this little symbol here, it's just going to cycle through every sample each time we hit a key. And we can see this down here. We're at A, it's going to go to B, and then C and then D, and then E, F, and then back to A, and then so on and so forth. And then random, you guessed it. It's a random choice of whatever you're gonna play. Who knows what you're gonna get. And that could be a cool, interesting kind of effect. Maybe you have six different sounds that are kind of similar, but kind of different, and you have some modulation going on there, and you kind of want them to have slightly different tonalities. So maybe slightly random, and you have, you know, when you're hitting different notes, who knows what's going to happen to have it more organic sounding. So that's kind of a cool feature in a sample engine that you have here. So that's basically the map, the edit, and the main in a nutshell. Later on, we are going to be diving into the granular with all these different buttons here because the granular is also located in the sample engine, but there's a whole lot here to cover, so we're going to leave that for the next following video. So hopefully you learned something, and if you enjoyed the video, press like, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.